You're listening to Footy Talk. This is your place where you get all the news, interviews and analysis from the world of AFL. And as we do every Tuesday, we try and set the agenda and analyse the biggest topics of the week with this man, Nick Rewalt, sitting at an airport in Minnesota. You're a busy man. You're working hard, but I know you've been across the footy over the weekend. First of all, let's get straight into your thought of the week. Yeah, well, th- thought of the week, Joey, it's probably a little bit knee-jerk, knee to be honest. And I was certainly in the camp last year of, of supporting North Melbourne when they came out and won that game late in the year because I thought culturally what it could do for a young group, then launching them into summer to, to just have that taste of victory. But watching Harley Reid on the weekend and what he did, I, I just wonder whether clubs need to be more strategic than than North Melbourne were last year in, in securing talent via the draft. When, I mean, we're talking about a player. He's the most talked about number one draft pick I've seen in my time in football. The expectation was that he was going to come in straight away, play like a man, and it hasn't taken long for that to come to fruition. And gee, the culture that they gained by by winning that game last year, I mean, they're zero and five to start the season this year, really. Any, any of that goodness out of that win has come unstuck already and what they lost out on by missing out on Harley Reid from winning that game it just it just has caused me to reconsider the whole the whole meaning of of tanking and what you can potentially get as a result of uh, of, of losing games when you probably should so I wonder what what do you think? What do you think the North Melbourne people thought watching Harley Reid run around on the weekend, Joey? Yeah, it's a great point, Rui. I, I love it. I think they thought, geez, it'd be nice to have Harley Reid in our side because you're right. He has almost turned around or changed the fortunes of that West Coast Eagles footy club. Not so much in the wins and losses and all of a sudden they're going to be a finals team, but what he has done for the environment, for the fans, for the rest of the playing group, that there is now some genuine positivity and excitement around the place. He actually has put them on his back, and not literally, but just the way that they've embraced him and the way he's embraced the footy club. It was unbelievable what he did on the weekend, like the 27 disposals, the way that he was still breaking tackles and, and the seven clearances for a young man. Do you think, though, like adding on to that, that one young man can actually change the fortunes of a footy club? And you won't want to touch on it too much, but in some ways it was a bit similar to, to you at St Kilda all those years ago. They'd been a club struggling for a long time and to have sort of one beacon and one sort of player that not only with the on-field, but the, the culture and the leadership off the field to drive the club. Do you think that's that is possible with Harley Reid and he can do that? Oh, I think he's a transcendent talent. I mean, for a start, he's always going to elevate himself from other young kids coming in because of his size and his shape and the way he plays the game. I mean, he dusty, dusty. Not many young players are going to be able to do that straight off the bat. But you're right. It's it's more than just about the footy. I mean, how many times is he on the back page over summer? He, he he's he's more than just the on field presence, and he has you know he's certainly been that in the in the few months that he's been at the football club. But it it, it just to me, as much as I was supportive. And this is knee-jerk. As much as I was supportive of North Melbourne winning that game last year because I was part of sides that, you know, won games late in the season, what it could potentially cost them, and we might be talking about this for 15 years, uh, I, I, I just wonder if they had their time again, whether the directive would have been a little bit stronger. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think I've always been in that camp. I find it a bit of a... I don't agree. I'm not. I don't agree. I think it's a bit overhyped. This whole, you know, oh, if a team wins the final when they're down by ten goals, if they just win this final quarter, they can take some momentum into next week. Or if they just finish the year strong and win the last couple of games, even though they're down the bottom, they can take it into preseason. I always find that I roll my eyes at that. I don't think that really matters at all. So I probably agree with you yep. uh, that 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 last game. It didn't really matter. The win, yeah, they got that short-term satisfaction, sing the song and got to enjoy a few beers. But you're right, what it meant for the club for 15 years. I am in the same camp. Hey, my thought of the week, and and this is a a bit more, I suppose, contentious, but I want to get your take because you have three young boys that uh, hopefully have aspirations to play for St Kilda one day. But off the back of the weekend in regards to the 50-50 ground ball and the technique to go in to win the ball. So there was an incident on a Friday night, Tom Liberatore and Todd Goldstein. Liberatore goes in with a perfect technique, turns his body, wins the ball. Goldstein leads with his head. Goldstein gets a free kick. Then we see Matty Crouch go in uh, hard, low, 
slightly didn't put his hands on the footy. He gets suspended. And then we saw Zach Butters, of course, the incident where he goes low and hard, clips the head of Bailey Banfield, but they say he made a genuine play at the footy and picks it up. I want to ask then, what are we trying to teach now, our 17, 16, 15-year-old kids that are going to be the next crop of AFL players to do when there is a ground ball? Because I've always thought and always been told, you go low and hard and protect yourself and turn your body and you will be fine. But we're in a situation now where if you do that at AFL level and the other person leads with their head, one, you're going to give away the free kick is what we've understood off the decision of Liberatore. Two, if you are slightly late or you slightly don't get there or put your hands on the footy, you're going to get suspended. Or we're saying, you know what, just go and pick up the ball. It's okay just to put your head over it because you're going to be safe. No one's going to hurt you. You can't give away a free kick. You can't get suspended, but you might get concussion. What, what, do, you, what do you think the right way is to teach our kids to pick up the footy now, Rui? Because we're in this interesting situation where we're trying to work out, is it everyone else's um, responsibility on the football field to protect the player? Or is it the player's own responsibility in a marking contest and a grand ball to protect themselves first? If you've got your three boys yeah, and you're uh, training them, what do you, where do you think you should be going with this? Yeah, well, I don't think it's up to the people training young kids necessarily. I think the tail can't wag the dog in that, in that sense. I, I think rewarding the player that goes in head first, we, we need to move away from that. Because yep. it, it's, it's, I think it's on the player that's contesting the ball to self-preservation has to come first, you know, because if, because if two players are coming in at the same time, one goes head first and the other goes side on. Well, I, I don't think the player, if it is simultaneous, I think Crouch yep. was late. So yes, I think that yep. was right for him to get suspended. Yep. But 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 if players are arriving simultaneously, one goes side on, gets the head out of the way, but still goes low and hard, and the other comes in, you know, without first, any, any yep. sort of care for himself, head head first. Well, then I th- I don't think you can blame the player going side on. So I th- mm. so I think we need to stop rewarding the head first action, and then when we're teaching it, we teach every player go low. Go hard, but get your head out of the way and go side on, and and, and that's the way we've got to start to teach it. it. You know, this this is how we used to play the game. That that conversation isn't applicable anymore because it's a new landscape. I mean, particularly in the wake of Brayshaw and Murphy and some of these guys. But it's getting messy because we're also being conditioned the the AFL and the play. You have to protect the head at all costs. You have to protect the head at all costs. So now it's in situations where players are putting themselves in situations that they shouldn't. But they are getting rewarded because it's everyone else's responsibility to protect someone else's head. It's just a really interesting phase we're in with this balance of concussions and and uh, and, and the game and how we want it to look. And speaking of that, Rui, really, some breaking news has just come through as we do this podcast early on Tuesday morning. Nathan Murphy, the Premiership player for Collingwood, obviously hasn't been playing because of the concussion symptoms, has announced his retirement. So this is why these conversations around players protecting themselves and, and players on the field looking after each other's heads comes to the fore. Another young man whose career and dream has been cut short to look after his long-term safety. Yeah, I, I guess it's a reflection of, of just how far this movement, if you want to call it that, has come. That we, we have players now that... You know, I, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall and, and, and sat in on some of those conversations and understood just how adamant the, prof- the medical professionals were and whether they, they still left the call up to Nathan Murphy. Murphy, m- m- my sense would be that, you know, he's he's been a little bit reluctant to sort of come to terms with it. And, and then so, so the advice would have been really, really strong. Um, but we've come a long way to have, to have two young, you know, Brayshaw and, and, and Murphy, two young guys with so much footy in front of them to have made that really, really tough decision, I think is just a reflection of, of where we're at now with with this issue and, and how seriously now the players are taking it. So hopefully, you know, more and more that message starts ringing through. So the conversations we're having around contesting the footy head first, you know, start to become less and less um, relevant and important because players are just adapting. Yeah, and I mean, we've had these chats on, on this show where we, had, we spoke about Paddy McCartan a lot. I mean, congratulations first to Nathan Murphy and he's got his premiership and so is Angus Brayshaw. And, yeah. But we, we know exactly, we know how agonizingly tough the decisions would have been for these players because we, we're able, we were lucky enough to 
to be in the situation. But I think it's a no-brainer for me, and I think you're in the same camp now that we've retired. It's probably easier, but in hindsight, to say to these young men, there is so much more of your life that is so much more important than playing a few more years of AFL footy. We've had teammates and, and friends that are you know struggling because of concussions and I think they've made the right decision and I know it's easier for us now on the other side of the fence, but uh, I think they've made the right call. So good luck to them in their careers and yeah, they'll never be, you, they've, you, they've left you, a legacy you, anyway. Yeah. Well, you, you call it a no brainer. I mean, I, I don't think it's a no brainer at all. Not, not for a young man. I mean, no, for us to say, for us, like, for uh, us to sit outside, it's a no brainer. Well, for those it, players, to, it's to a hard sit, decision. sit here with the, yeah, to sit here with the benefit of you know experience and being forty and having a family and mm. having all of those things, yeah, yeah, you say it's a it's a no brainer. But gee, for the for the young guys in the moment, I mean, I remember, yeah, you know, leading into some big games and and getting injected to play in big games and and you know making comments like, I don't care what the rest of my life look like, looks like, I just want to get up and play this game. I mean, when you're in it for a young man, it is it is agonising. So, um, you know, they will, you're right, they will look back with the benefit of hindsight, particularly with premierships in their back pocket and say, you know, like I achieved something really, really special and I got to live the rest of my life, you know, in the best possible shape. But yeah, credit, credit to them because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a brave call and um, they, they should be applauded for almost being pioneers of, of this sort of self-preservation movement, if you like. Yeah, well done. Well said. Hey, we'll move on to some teams that we just want to touch on that are they're in the news and uh, and they've got some issues of their own going on. First of all, Richmond, uh, we know they are absolutely banged up with injury now. Uh, we know the situation there. Do you see the positives? Is it now just an opportunity for the Tigers just to play some kids and they've almost forced their hand to find out which of these youngsters can play and which can't? And what impact does it have, how well, they, how much they're going to struggle on some of the senior players and their motivation to play at a high level from here on in? Oh, cry me a river, senior players. You've got three in your back pocket. You know, <laughs> <come on. laughs> yeah, um, yeah, look, I, I think some of those senior players, you, you, you find a way to shift your purpose, you know, like they were all young players when they had senior players sort of mentoring them and um, the impression that those senior players left on them led, led them to win three flags. So, you know, they've got a different role to play now. And I, I think it's I think it's good for the Tigers, you know. You're, you're almost forced into a, a bit of a, a, an audit of some of these young guys on your list. I, I know, you know, Tiger fans... Um, They've had a pretty good run, so you'd expect them to to be understanding of that because a similar period of time netted them Cochin and and Martin and and these sort of guys. So um, you know they'll they'll work their way down the bottom of the ladder, find some other good young kids, and and bounce back. I'm sure. And um, you know the other the other clubs, the Western Bulldogs, that, yeah. that have some decisions to make. Where where do, where do you sit on those guys, Joey? Well, look, I'm in, I'm in the camp of I agree and whether they're, they're going to say Luke Beveridge is doing it intentionally or not, but trying to move past the same group of players they've had for the last two, three, four, five years that haven't been able to get them another premiership, haven't been able to net them the opportunity, particularly since the grand final of, of 2021 when they lost to Melbourne the last two years, lose an elimination final, miss out on finals. So he needs to regenerate the list and go, right, we need to go past the same group. I actually applaud the decision because if he had have kept picking the same plays in the same spots and they were getting the same results, we'd be also calling for Luke Beveridge's head saying, what's he doing here? So if gone past Lob, great. You've gone Sam Darcy. Uh, and we'll keep going with some other players, you know, with Caleb Daniel yeah. and Jack but, McRae. But is that, is that at odds, Joey, though, with the list management decisions to recruit Lob? So is, does the left hand know what the right hand's doing? Because if, you go, if you're going to move past them so quickly. What? Why Why are these guys on such big long-term deals? Well, they yeah, they, they signed the deals, though, a few years ago when they did think they were in the window. Like, you know, they got lobbed to the club after the grand final when they, you know, whether they were leading at halftime against Melbourne. They signed Caleb Daniel and, and Bailey Dale and Jack McRae to these deals at that point in time. So at that point in time, they felt they were in the premiership window. There's been two years since where they haven't delivered. So at some point, you've got to make some change. You've got to start to regenerate. And I think he's doing it the right way because what we've realized now, and you spoke about uh, Richmond, who are going to go through a rebuild with a lot of veterans coming off a cliff. Hawthorne are going through it. I don't think waiting till your team is falling off a cliff with old players and going through a full rebuild of youngsters works anymore. The draft, you just don't get enough concessions with the draft. There's so many other ways for teams at the top of the ladder to stay at the top. 
you've got to now regenerate on the run. And I think Luke Beveridge understands this. I think he's a very clever man, and sometimes he's maybe too clever for his own good. But he understands, I can't just wait for all these blokes to be over 30, rinse every single ounce of you know performance out of them. Let's see if it's good enough, even though it's probably shown it's not. And then they all tip over and you start to regenerate and, and go to the draft. I think he's doing it on the run. Yep. I don't mind his approach. Now, it might be a bit of short-term pain, yep. but he knows they need some athleticism. They need some leg speed. They need guys that are willing to do both sides of the ball, not just rack up heaps of touches and not actually be players that really want to defend and, and help that side. So I yep. don't mind what he's doing. It's going to be interesting. There's a press conference today well, with Luke, Luke Beveridge coming out. I think the understanding is he's going to come out and say and make it clear, we are still trying to win the premiership this year which is the right message. But as you know, Rui, it's a fine line between playing for the now, which of course you want to do, and at the same time trying to blood your next wave and finding your next group. It's, it's a real balancing act, isn't it? Well, you, you can do both. Geelong yeah. and Sydney have shown yep. us that uh, over the past 15 years. I mean, they, they, they just have refused to bottom out. And the one thing you do in that respect is you remain a destination club. No one wants, like, free agency, no one's going to the bottom clubs anymore. Exactly. The, the only players going to bottom clubs are average players that are getting really, really big money and, and paid way overs. And the other thing I think, by doing it now, you know, maybe they're just in front of the pack because we know Tassie's coming in. So the draft, you know, they're, 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 we're going to have compromised drafts in, in four or five years. So to actually do it now on the run, I, I, I agree with you. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the dogs go really hard at the end of the year and try and move some of these guys. Try and move Rory Lobb again. Try and move Bailey Dale and, and Caleb Daniel and some of these guys that, you know, could go to a, a high-end contender, play a role, and, and the dogs get, you know, almost a double whammy in terms of being able to stop supplement some of the players on their list. Their core is still good enough. Like Bontempelli, Norton, uh, Darcy, Eugle Hagen, like the real core of what's yeah. going to be their next flag team. they get got a stack of footy left in them. So they've got time to go and, you know, complement the likes of Riley Sanders and these young kids, get two or three years into them and still be contending when Bontempelli and these guys are playing great footy. Yep, spot on. And at their advantage, they've got players with currency. It's better than waiting until these players don't have any yeah. currency. So maybe you just move them on slightly early and uh, and they can regenerate pretty quick. Hey, we will take a quick break. Rui, you are listening to Footy Talk. If you do have a question for us, make sure you get on Instagram and hit us up at footy talk underscore pod or on TikTok at footy talk pod. After this, real talk, shit talk. You're listening to Footy Talk. If you're listening on Spotify, make sure you hit the bell to be notified when we drop a new episode. I'm here with Nick Rewalt, as we are every Tuesday. Bit of real talk, shit talk. Rui, first question for you, because uh, I know you love this sort of stuff around money and contracts. Errol Goulden signing a four-year deal at the Swans and knocking back a 10-year deal at over a million dollars a year is a smart move. Real or shit talk? I'm going to – oh, wow, that's a tough one. But you don't know from stump me, Joe. I'm going to go with shit talk. I'm going to go with shit talk because we're, we're talk today we spoke about Angus Brayshaw and Nathan Murphy retiring due to concussion. So anything's possible. And if he, if he was offered a million a year for 10 years. At least a million a year. How much more is he going to get? At least a million a year. How much more is he going to get? Probably it's around about the same. his four-year deal. We're probably around about the same. Yeah. Well, you might so even what, get less so to start your own club. You get maybe less. he wants – yeah, maybe. So maybe he wanted the flexibility to be able to – well, he came out and said he's not going to go to another club. He's a, he's exactly. a loyal guy because he was talking about Liverpool and Steven Gerrard and all of these sort of guys. So, gee, bird in the hand, I would have thought, um, to take the take the ten year deal and then you're locked away. You don't have to think about it again. I don't know. But if he doesn't seems want to a, go to seems another a club, strange one to me. If you don't want to go to another club, you've just got to accept well, you're going to get less, and that's all part of it. But if you're happy, yeah, but, happiness is more important yeah, than money. Room. What if you get hurt? Happiness yeah, more important than money. Hurt, Joey? Oh well, what yeah, if you what go if to you another? Hurt? Well, what if you go to a club and you get your million dollars and you hate your footy there because you're at a bad team? I'm not. I'm not talking about going to another club. I'm talking about what if you got? What if you get hurt between now and then? Yeah, well then he's like, what if you're Angus Brayshaw? He's leaving a lot of money on the Drinking table. Brayshaw would have liked to have signed a ten year. Well, maybe maybe he is. He maybe he is. Did. He but, had seven years. Um, anyway, love the way he plays. Well, you know, easy from an armchair, Joey. We don't know yes. all the details, but That's right. one thing's for sure. Sydney, you've got an absolute beauty because he is a star. I've got two for you. Yep. Um, first one, a bit of talk about the Western Bulldogs, and we, we've touched on them, but people out there saying that Luke Beveridge's job isn't safe, for... real talk or shit talk? It is real talk. I'm not in that camp. I think they should stick with Luke Beveridge, but I, I get 
the, the, I get the narrative because it's for me generally, and I reckon it was a bit the same with St Kilda a few years ago. Rui, we were agreeing, it's one or the other. It's either the list isn't good enough and we need to regenerate and turn it over, or the list is great but our coach yeah. isn't maximising the list we've got. So it's it's one or the other. I'm in the camp with the dogs as we just touched on in, in before the break that they need to regenerate the list. But I can understand if other people say, no, it's the other way around. Their list is good enough. And Caleb Daniel and McRae and Bailey Dale and Rory Lobb are all very good players individually. It's another coach to get the best out of them. So it is real talk. But I'm not in that camp, if that makes sense. Got it. Got it. Okay, second one. The score review. We spoke about it last week. We're speaking about it again this week. The score review is robbing us of enjoyment during games. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. This is real talk. Really. Every time there's a goal kick. Now we're getting these score reviews when 95% of us know that it was either a goal or it wasn't yet. We have to sit, sit around and wait for 30 seconds. They've got it wrong. The AFL T- to tell the, um- the goal umpires, if you're in any sort of doubt, get it reviewed. We'll all stand around and wait. And then we'll have our 30 seconds and go back to the middle to do the center bounce is a complete crock. I'm not sure whether they're not saying back your own decision in stick to your call because 90% of the time your call will be right anyway. And we will soft review it. And if there is a mistake, we'll call it back. It's pretty straightforward. I don't get what they're doing. They're stuffing it up and everyone is on the same page with this. So that is real talk. It is just sucking the life out of some of these great goals because we're all like, Oh, here we go. Let's wait 30 seconds. Hey, last one. We'll finish on a, on a positive note, Rui. Uh, It was announced yesterday that one of our favorites, Jason Dunstall has been elevated to legend in the hall of fame. This is real talk. I would both agree. I know he was an idol of yours. Just a quick comment on the chief Jason Dunstall. Yeah, well, my, my hero growing up, Joey, uh, I barracked for Hawthorne. I had Jason Dunstall poster on my wall uh, and did a, actually the project when I was in primary school and I <laughs> spoke about wanting to change my name, spoke about wanting to change my name to Jason uh, because of Jason <laughs> Dunstall. And it, it was something that I'd, I, I could never bring myself to tell him until the first year I'd finished playing and I was driving down to GMHBA Stadium for a game. And the, the day before, Jason had called me and said, hey, we're doing the game at GMHBA. Pick me up tomorrow at 10 a.m. There was wow. no there was no please. There was no asking. It was just an order to pick him up. And obviously, yep. I was happy to oblige. And so we're in the car and we're on the way down to GMHBA. And mum called. And I, I, like you do, when someone else is in the car, I, I declared, hey, mum, I'm just in the car on the way down to GMHBA Stadium. But Jason's in the car with me. So, you know, don't say anything silly. She goes, Jason? Jason who? I said, oh, Jason Dunstall. He goes, oh, Jason, you wouldn't believe it. Nick did a project about you when he was a kid and he wanted to change his name. Well, you don't reckon you don't reckon he dined out on that for the rest of the car trip and the last yeah. five or six years. So um, absolutely loved him growing up, been so privileged to have worked. Not many people get to work with their heroes, Joey. Mm-hmm. So to be able to work with him over the past, um, you know, 20 years from the old gospel days and then at Fox Footy has been a, uh, a treat and, yeah, um, just so well and truly deserved. A very, very humble man, Jason, yep. for all that he, he achieved. He really talks about himself and, yeah, just a, an all-time great bloke. So, well done, Chiefy. Love yep. you, mate. Second that, I get to work with him now Thursday nights, really, and getting to know him. You're right, he's humble. Yep. And all this talk about him yeah, being a grumpy Jason and doesn't like people, he's actually very, very accommodating. He's very funny. He's very engaging, and I enjoy his company. Yep. So, I'm very, I'll very tell you lucky. what else he is. He's very smart. Yes, he's he one knows of the everything. Smartest people I've ever yeah, he knows everything about everything. everything. Yeah, and <laughs> the best, the best at crosswords I have ever seen. He is the crossword king. Yeah, do a crossword Very, with him. It's right. unbelievable. Oh, there you go. Very smart man. Hey, thank you for your time, Rui. I know you got to catch a flight, so we will let you go. This is Footy Talk. If you do want to get involved, if you do want to get involved, make sure you hit us up on Instagram tomorrow. A rose between two thorns. Abby Holmes with Ryan Daniels and Jack Heverin to take a look at the week from a player's point of view. Until then, enjoy your Tuesday. Thanks for watching Footy Talk with myself and Rui. New podcast episodes dropping every Tuesday, so make sure you tune in.